when uh, new artistic director of BTEF of, for this 50 issue, even Medenica was nominated, one of his immediate idea was to organize this conference and to devote huge attention to what BTEF really meant uh, in its history from its beginning, not only for itself, for theater history, but for, uh, I would say, cultural diplomacy, political status of Yugoslavia of that time and Belgrade. And today, I am very honored to have all of you in the audience, to have ministers of culture, to have ambassadors, to have people who are directors of prominent cultural institutions from all around the world, from north of Europe till South Africa. So it's again this year that BTEF through its repertory, through its program, but through this kind of conferences and through conference of theater critics of the world is again gaining its, I would say, cosmopolitan uh, horizons and opening. Uh, allow me to present you Vladan Lukosavljevic, Minister of Culture of the Repub Republic of Serbia, and to kindly ask him to address this uh, reunion, this conference. Dear Minister of Culture of Romania, Madame Shutel, Respected Special Advisor of the President of the Russian Federation for International Cultural Cooperation, Mr. Svitkoi. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to be here with you today and address this, for me personally, a very important role. I believe that culture and cultural diplomacy is not just a soft power per se. It is a superpower which has the ability to create a new world. The history of BTEF is the history of diplomacy in culture and culture in diplomacy. There is no better way for the recognition of a country, society, and nation than through arts. I would like to bring to your attention the words of Edouard Herriot. Culture is what is left after we have forgotten everything else. Away from daily politics, art is establishing deeper ties in a much better way than official agendas. From its beginnings, the festival has been a unique global phenomenon. On the one hand, it was an opportunity through which foreign governments promoted their values through artistic expression. Belgrade was recognized as a place where East met the West. We were witnessing artists from the US and Soviet Union performing next to each other. For Yugoslavia, it was strong cultural diplomacy weapon, and Mira Trajlovic and Jovan Cirilov were recognized as ambassadors of theater worldwide. I believe that BTEF will find its old role in a new world. Although in a globalized world, borders and means of communication have taken another role, it is still necessary to strive for the mutual respect of different values and traditions. In this respect, the priority of the Ministry of Culture and Media of the Republic of Serbia will be to further strengthen international cooperation and investigate new strategies and approaches which will position Serbia as a credible partner on the map of the region, Europe and the world not, for, not forgetting our roots. I hope that I can rely on all of you for support on this mission. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I kindly ask Rector of the University of Art, Professor Zoran Eric, our famous composer, to address this. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, on behalf of the University of Arts, it's a great pleasure and honor to Welcome you at the conference, uh, BTEF and Cultural Diplomacy, Theater Festival, and Geopolitics. The co the, this conference is dedicated uh, to important jubilees, the 50th anniversary of BTEF Festival and the 15th anniversary of establishing the postgraduate, today it is master, program uh, Culture, Policy, and Management uh, at the University of Arts in Belgrade. This jointly de delivered program in collaboration with the University of Lyon II uh, for its excellence in promotion of intercultural cooperation uh, and mediating capacities of culture uh, has become the first international and regional project of that kind uh, supported by UNESCO and uh, named UNESCO Chair in 2004. 
In the past 15 years, this program has given outstanding results in the field of cultural management and in a broader sense in the entire cultural sector in the Balkans and beyond, thanks to the dedication and enthusiasm of Professor Milena Dragicevic-Sesic, the founder of the program and the former rector of the University of Arts in Belgrade. With respect to the topic of the conference, we are very proud of the fact that our Master in Cultural Policy and Management established in the first years of the century, by its openness to the students from all over the world, by its concept and mission has become a significant instrument of regional culture, cultural diplomacy and a kind of platform for reconciliation of the Balkan countries through culture, education and common issues. This is particularly the meeting point of the BITA Festival and our program Culture, Policy and Management as two forms of the same mission aimed at crossing the intercultural bridges, hoping that this conference would not be only a place of exchange but a platform for, well, sometimes uh, polemical dialogues and encouragement for new approaches in your research. I wish you successful work and great outcomes in conference deliberations. Thank you. As our rector has already mentioned, our UNESCO chair uh, for cultural policy and management, I would now ask Professor Goran Milošinović, president of the Serbian committee for UNESCO to address. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me cordially welcome you on the behalf of the uh, Serbian National Commission for the UNESCO. I'm truly honored to be here with you today. Serbian National Commission for UNESCO is the part of the global network of UNESCO National Commissions, working as the link between national governments and UNESCO. The main function is associating governmental and non-governmental bodies in education, science, culture, and communication with the work of the UNESCO organization. Presently, there are national commissions in 195 UNESCO member states around the globe. Our National Commission was established in, in 1950 and re-established as a Serbian National Commission in 2001. Currently, it has 25 members as the representatives from <coughs> ministries, Academy of Science and Art, universities, institutions, and NGOs. Yeah, <laughs> as we are here today, thanks to devoted work by BTEF organizers, but also that of UNESCO Chair of the University of Arts in Belgrade, let me reflect a bit upon UNESCO Chair's program. It was launched back in 1992 with the mission to promote international inter-university cooperation and networking. The program supports the establishment of UNESCO Chair in the key priority areas relating to the UNESCO fields and competence. Through this network, higher education and research institutions all over the globe pool their resources, both human and material, to address pressing challenges and contribute to the development of their societies. In many instances, the networks and chairs serve as, as think tanks and as bridge builders between academia, civil society, local communities, research and policy making. They have proven useful in promoting cultural diversity as well. Today, the program involves over 700 institutions in 128 countries. The importance of UNESCO chairs comes mainly from the fact that they support intellectual dialogue development of the culture of peace and international exchange and cooperation. This creates specialists who are ready to promote culture and art of their own country involving the new global tendencies while respecting the right of diversity at the same time. As Serbia is an active participant in the process of cultural, educational and scientific cooperation supported by UNESCO, it is extremely important that in our country work and activities of the UNESCO chairs is recognized and facilitated. Presently, there are three of those chairs in Serbia in the field of culture and social sciences at the University of Novi Sad, at the Center for Education Policy, and the organizing this conference today at the University of Arts in Belgrade. UNESCO chair at the University of Arts in Belgrade was, as it was said, established in 2004 and organize interdisciplinary master studies for cultural policy and management in collaboration with the University of Lyon too. The program is conducted in English <laughs> and French, which allows the true internationalization of studies. The success of the program is provided by very high level of employment of former students, 
which measures up to 93%. So far, the program enrolled more than 403 students, 100 of them being international students coming from over 30 different countries, European, Asian, and African. Thus, this program significantly contributes to the internationalization of the University of Belgrade, especially as it also engages professors who teach at university around the world. To the program, students are able to grasp an insight into different cultural policy and practices, develop a set of specific skills and knowledges, and become particularly trained for, to participate in the process of cultural diplomacy, which besides other activity involves organizing festivals and various forms of events that contribute largely to the positive reputation of our country in the world. BTEF Festival is just an example of such an event with its 50 <coughs> years long tradition of excellence. On the behalf of the Serbian National Commission for UNESCO, I would like to thank you, the organizers of this conference, yeah. and wish you all successful work. Thank you. I just, uh, I will. Okay. Uh, I will finally ask exactly executive director of this house, Atelier 212, Masha Mikhailovich, to tell us few words. Thank you. Dear guests and friends, Theater Atelier 212 yeah, is making sure. its 60th anniversary this year while BITEF is celebrating fifth, 50th birthday. BITEF was born in Atelier 212 and it emerged quite naturally from, from the old the world which was itself founded as a free space for new ideas for the modern and the avant-garde. Very shortly, the space of Atelier 212 became too small for BTEF and liberally, the festival went on its, its own path of conquering freedoms, artistic, political, and social. It strongly moved borders and connected the world in a unique way, at the same time changing and correcting our attitude towards theater, freedom, and the world. It has come a, a long way and the journey continues. It's good for it to come home once in a while. Thank you. In fact, now I would like to tell you a few words about Mira Trailovic as inspiration and role model. That I don't know, Masha, is there? We will check, but can we ask? Since it works, no. Is it working? Is it working? not working. Is it? because I can speak very loudly, and that's uh, my turn anyway. So uh, I wanted just to remind you, just to see that I haven't written that long before, so I will start with Bob Wilson's words from the opening of Bitter Festival this year. He said, festivals are the real platforms where art can happen. And thanks to Bitter Festival, many projects such as even Einstein on the beach has been created. And Belgrade audience heard that for the first time and realized how important, even as a producer, this festival was. But the other story which Wilson was telling the audience, imagine story about his encounter with Tito, was telling us something more about soft power and Yugoslavia. Probably for him, 
As Tito, for example, was seduced by American soft power. That was in his story, the story about Elizabeth Taylor. In the same way, Wilson and many other artists from around the world has been seduced by life promised by socialist Yugoslavia, by self-government, by brotherhood and unity of different nations living together, by everything that Yugoslavian socialism was promising and seemed to be delivering. So in his imagined story, this was somehow very significant, how important these political links of uh, theater and uh, politics has been established throughout. And of course, this year title, On the Back of a Raging Bull, uh, of this year bit of program, is also significant for geopolitics. And this conference is about geopolitics. <coughs> On the opening already, we had a representative artist from Lithuania till Romania and France, from Russia to United States, from numerous countries from the region. And the repertory of the main program brings much more, brings Singapore, Lebanon, China. But in its content, it includes even more and even further Burundi, Indonesia, Japan, India, New York, Content is even more meaningful for geopolitics. Nearly all the repertory of this year, Bitev, is somehow uh, rethinking different positions, relations in between avant-garde of the East and the West, New York and remote parts of Poland, and so on. Asian cultures linking tradition <laughs> and contemporaneity. 150 critics on AICT conference. Projects such as Justice, which was really one of the first and most important projects of theater academia from the region, from Zagreb, Sarajevo, Belgrade, and so on, Macedonia, Skopje. So Circus Vera linking Belgrade and Zagreb, a cir new circus uh, artist. So we can say that all that proves that Bitev wants to be a very active player again after 50 years in geopolitics. But my reasons to immediately accept the proposal of Jörn Medenza to make this uh, conference possible is not only my interest in geopolitics, it's my long-lasting research about leadership skills and entrepreneurial spirit that Mira Trailovic had and introduced in our system. That in spite of, we, we often say rigid socialism, etatistic structures, and so on. No, entrepreneurial spirit such as hers was able to create institutions from the zero or institutions within institutions and go always further. So this is something that we have to ask ourselves. Here are just a few main, let's say, theoretical bases. Moisi, Nisbet, Todorova, uh, Monica Mokre, Fouché Michel, that are inspiring my research, but I'm not going to bother you with all these theories because it's not neither time, neither place for that. But I would like just to use this Moisi theory of geopolitics of emotion to explain why and how Yugoslavia in 60s as a part of this culture of hope, which was predominant in that time throughout the world, was playing significant role. Yes, in the post Second World <laughs> War, uh, uh, a lot of, let's say, uh, globe was predominantly in culture of hope. Decolonized countries of Asia and Africa had in front of them bright future. Uh, Western countries have seen every day their standard of living, progress, democracy building up. The, even the East, in many, in numerous countries, as my colleagues from Russia used to say, we were very proud citizens of Soviet Union. We really believed that we are bringing justice to the world and to this colonized people that we are bringing freedom. So culture of hope 
was something there. Cultural fear existed because it was bipolar world. But in this culture of fear, which was, however, let's say, marginalized, Yugoslavia, with non-aligned movement, mm -hmm. contributed a lot to balance and to show that dialogue is possible. So BTF was acting as a platform of a dialogue within a Cold War, dialogue of not only East and West, but even in a more very narrow sense, East and West Berlin theater practitioners are gathering here in the, in the same, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, in the same festival, in the same platform. How far it is from today's situation when uh, we are living mostly in <coughs> cultural fear, fight against terrorism, where uh, securitization became, even the last conference about arts was about security policies and the arts that I participated in Skopje, keynote speech, and everyone was about security, security. So we are living today in completely different world, world of fear, where culture of hope is <coughs> marginalized and culture of humiliation is more and more predominant. It's not only that <coughs> it started with Palestine and Arab world with this uh, unfortunate, uh, let's say, exile of Palestinian people. It continues today throughout the Arab world, Africa, that all those countries and people feel humiliated. So in this new geopolitics, as Moisi is saying, the role of arts and culture should again be different, but is nevertheless even more important. I just wanted to uh, just remind you that Belgrade discussed a little bit how to return this soft power. Would it be through Belgrade as a sin city, clubbing and joy and entertainment? Or should it be through arts, through debate, through reflection, criticism? And I hope that with new cultural policy, we can believe that it's going to be through this, through arts, through exploration, through research, through reflection, debate. And yes, the question is, what we can learn from Mira Trailovic, what we can learn from her leadership skills and from the ways she handled different, much more tough, even political issues during her career. It was not that in that time, sometimes we think it was easy in 60s, she had political support, everything was, Yugoslavia was opened politically and so on. It was not neither that bright, as sometimes it looked from this perspective, neither that free. You have to fight for every step of your uh, freedom. So what I wanted to say is that her personal story is not only the story of professional development within theater field, how she introduced Atelier 212 in that time, as a theater first without actors. It was Boyan Stupica who imposed to her idea of ensemble, because her initial idea was open theater for projects, for groups, for, for change. It's also a story about possibilities, how to influence both cultural diplomacy and cultural policy from bottom up, by your own action, by your own doing. Because I'm sure Belgrade wouldn't be this open without Bitev. It was the first festival of international kind. And then later followed the others, inspired by Mira, Bemus, Fest, and we are going to hear from some of the participants during this two-day conference about it. So it contributes a lot to the changes of the value system in our society, in cultural policy, and uh, in uh, cultural diplomacy. What is more important to say, it is that she did it without formal functional authority in the beginning, because she was not director of Atelier 212. It was Radosh Novakovic. 
So she did it by, first of all, and without any political function, because she was not even party, Communist Party member, not to say that she d didn't have any other function. She became a leader in a cultural sphere within this socialist state, contributing to wider policy and institutional changes, specifically because of her personal authority, competence, knowledge, and skills. And we can say, and I used a lot of this um, vocabulary of Deserto about strategies and tactics, and yes, she by intuition has used a lot of strategies and tactics to bring even those who have been dissident in, her, in their own country, such as Living Theater, which we can see on the picture, Bread and Puppet Theater, and so on. So, first comings of American troops on Bitter hasn't been supported by American money, just in case if somebody, because it's often the story that everything was paid during Cold War by CIA. Something was paid, but not everything. <laughs> and uh, not by CIA. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in any case, I would say she was brave enough to negotiate with all, with Soviet Union, to bring official but also dissident theater. To start with Bulat Okujava poetry. That was also bravery. On the theater festival, you are inviting poets. Bela Ahmadulina, Bulat Okujava, and so on. So opening first in 67, uh, visual art, Bitev. So realizing immediately what is the power of new artistic practices in visual arts and how important it is for the performances. It's, you can imagine how early it was. And uh, to try to see, I'm not going to uh, keep you very longer, I can say that she was creating a bit of international theater in 67, and not immediately, but in few years, she started to discover Belgrade as a city of performance. And I have to say, in that time, nobody used the term public space, or uh, how is say, arts in public space, and so on. But she used, and with Jovan Cirillov, they researched, and with many others, uh, Lalitsky and Zmukic, what are the possibilities of non-theatrical spaces to be used, and so on. Uh, who were a bit of guests? You can just see a brief list from all around the world. You can see the bit of design, how cosmopolitan and important it was. So the organizational culture that she brought in Belgrade for the first time was this culture of entrepreneurialism, laboratory, space of innovation, and research. And I think I will finish with this, uh, uh, let's say, statement. Mm -hmm. in, the, in her uh, orientation toward repertory policies, both in Atelier 212 and for the Bitter Festival, she supported, together with Jovan Cirillov, three layers of action. These are, first one was linked to aesthetic, vanguard experimentation, to make both Atelier and Bitev a platform for experiments, for new tendencies. The second one was devoted also mm -hmm. to political and social criticism. Thus, here in the Atelier 212, on the repertory, you had Bulgakov, you had Ciosic, and many others who really uh, investigated uh, that and put serious political issues on the agenda. And the third, on the repertory of the theater, was a popular <coughs> representation of mentality. What that meant as a third line in Bitev, it was a representation of theatrical traditions and theatrical roots from around the world. And that is anecdote with which I would like to finish this expose. When Bitev first festival was created, she got support. It's nice to say also that Vukos was one of the politicians who really supported this idea. But the program was finished Grotowski, leaving all this what 
she meant that has to be on the first issue of the agenda was there. And then a phone call from the government saying, enjoy, you are going to be very happy. We got a present for the opening of the bitte. And this present comes <coughs> directly from Nehru, from Indian government. It's going to be Katakali theater. Of course, Katakali is the most traditional Sanskrit-based theater tradition of India. What that has to do with innovation, vanguard, cutting edge experiments, naked bodies, and so on. But it was out of the question to refuse Nehru present. Neither government would do it, neither she could do it. It was a present. So she had to find a rationale for existence of this and to open, it was the opening, for the opening of the bitter with Katakali. And she found it. And I have to remind you, it was long before Brooke went to Africa and India. It was long before Barba created anthropological theater. It was 67. And she said, from now on, every year, on every edition of Bitev, there is going to be one theatrical tradition to show the roots of these vanguard movements for these cutting edge performances. Because knowing or not knowing, they are all inspired by old theatrical traditions. And that's how her diplomatic skills helped that non-aligned movement had something, let's say, to be present geopolitically on this first bitter. Because otherwise, it would be very difficult. Because experiments were happening in Western Europe, in Poland, in Czech, in Moscow, St. Peter, in Leningrad at that time, but not in just in that moment recently decolonialized Africa and so on. But with this, Yoruba opera from Nigeria, for example, came to be tough. With this, many theatrical forms from non-aligned countries, Mexico, uh, dance of this deaf university troupe was performing and so on, have found its place. So Bitev really tried to mediate all these, I would say, uh, issues, challenges that uh, uh, the, in that time, new geopolitics, this new world in creation was uh, examining and trying to be a platform of the real debate. Uh, for that reason, we thank Tumira Trailovic and Jovan Cyrilov for making the world much closer to us throughout this uh, 50 years. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> And now I will give a word to uh, Ivan Medenica to announce, our, to tell us about future of the BITEV and to announce us uh, the next presenter. I'm, I'm the one who desperate, uh, desperately needs a micro <coughs> because I don't have no voice anymore after eight days of this bit of marathon and I will give my best for you to hear me. I apologize if I don't succeed in that. Um, when I was appointed the artistic director of Beta Festival a year ago, uh, my dear colleague who is uh, here in another function, Anya Susha, a co-curator of festival with me, she, because she is also an expert for the history of uh, Beta Festival. Her master thesis one was on Beta Festival. So Anya Susha and myself, we immediately decided that this jubilee, this 50th edition, should be at the same time a kind of historical overview celebration of the past of Bitev, but introduction of the newness, to be in the spirit of the Bitev and the ideas um, that Mira Trailovic 
first of all, and Jovan Cirilovic. Uh, Jovan Cirilov. <laughs> yeah. You see? Okay. A very similar <laughs> mistake to Omer uh, last year. Uh, introduced, introduced at the very beginning of, of beta. Um, so in our curatorial uh, concept, we decided to dedicate few programs, important big programs, to the past of Beta history of Beta Festival. We even made a whole day called Prologue Day, which had four exhibitions in four different venues and institutions, which are all of them very important for the history of Beta. And it was a kind of marathon we were running with Borja Pavicevic and Milena Dragicevic, Šešić and Ivana Vujic and a lot of you from one point, from one spot to another. We started in radio television of Serbia and uh, th there uh, our dear colleagues, uh, Bojana Andrić and Petar Ginovic made a wonderful exhibition on recordings of bit of performances. So, all the uh, TV material that was based on beat of performances. Then from that point, <coughs> following stars on the, on the ground, we came to this theater. Well, the whole thing started, as you know. The exhibition is still on. You can see it in the windows of, of the Atelier 2012. And this exhibition was an exhibition of the photos dedicated to the first 20 years of and this theater has been organizing the festival. Then we run <coughs> around the corner to New Moment Gallery, where we had the opportunity to see all the posters of Beta Festival, all 50 visual uh, identities of Beta Festival. And as New Moment <coughs> is uh, Beta's partner since 10 years ago, it was also a way. Um, it, it was also a way to express our gratitude to them uh, and this collaboration. And then we finished in Bitev Theater itself, where there was a fourth exhibition, it's still on, um, on the last, so to say, <coughs> sorry, 30 years of Bitev, uh, Bitev Festival. And then in there, in the same venue, there was the first production of this year's Bitev Cantor Downtown, which some of you have seen, and it's a kind of combination between a, a pseudo-historical reconstruction, so to say, of the famous uh, Cantor's, legendary Cantor's performance, uh, that class, and, and a video installation with some 10 interviews with some important and not so well known figures of the American avant-garde from 60s and 70s. And in that way, we wanted to show two important, I mean, this, this was really something when, when, when curators discover such a performance for the Jubilee, this is really a treasure, because we could celebrate with this um, piece two tendencies in the history of Beta uh, Festival, as Milena Dragicevic had already stressed, American historical avant-garde from uh, 60s, and on the other hand, a work of these great, great figures coming from Eastern Europe, in this case, Tadeusz Kantor. The second import, the most important um, context for uh, talking and thinking about the history of Vitev is this conference. I'm very grateful to Milena that she succeeded to organize it in such a perfect way with such really distinguished speakers and participants. And many other pro side programs uh, are dealing with, with the past of Vitev. On the other si side, as I have already said at the beginning, Anya and myself, we wanted to immediately on the 50th bit of start to explore what is new in uh, contemporary <coughs> performing <coughs> arts. So as you may know, uh, except Andras Urban, because his performance, which we are going to see tonight, The Patriots in National Theater is very important on many different levels. 
Andre Shurban was the only exception from the rule that we would present only the work of those uh, directors, playwrights, and choreographers, choreographers who have never been to Beethoven. So new faces, and uh, although some of them very well known abroad, but have never been at Beethoven uh, uh, Festival. On the other hand, we would like, we wanted uh, to go back to the historical roots of Beta Festival. The non-aligned movement has been mentioned and would be, I think, mentioned many times here. But it's not only about non-aligned movement, it's about the fact that Beta, from its very origins, was an international festival. In the <coughs> last decade, maybe, or even more, it became a little bit more focused on Western world, European theater with some performances coming from the States for different reasons. One of major reasons are finances, of course. It's much easier to have performances from Europe than to have something from Japan, India, etc. But we said, as we had a, a bit bigger budget, or a bigger budget this year comparing to to last year, that we sh should use this opportunity to re-emerge, how to say, uh, this international, wider international context at Beta Festival. So as Milena has already said, I'm very grateful that you stress this. We had performances from China, uh, Lebanon, two German performances with African artists dealing uh, with African uh, topics. Uh, uh, Singapore, etc. Uh, but it's not important only the, 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 the origins of these performances, but how they treat uh, these dialectics between uh, contemporary <coughs> theatrical expression and traditional forms, Western view to <coughs> Asia and uh, uh, their commodifications uh, regarding this view what are the expectations of the Western world, for example, um, towards a contemporary dance in India and how and whether a contemporary uh, Asian dance commodificate itself to be present on the Western festival market. So all these topics were political as well because BTF is a very political uh, project in a good sense and it has to stay political to make challenges on different level, on aesthetic level, on artistic, uh, on artistic level, and on political and social um, level. Uh, one of the reasons why I really, uh, uh, how to say, accepted with no dilemma um, the idea the offer that was made to me to become the artistic director of, of the festival was that I think there is a good momentum in this very moment for a renewal of BTEF in a different context. You will be talking, Milena has already talked about this, about the history of BTEF, the fact that BTEF in late 60s and early 70s was this ideal meeting point between, at that time, completely divided row between East and, and West. But nowadays, the situation is not much different. Uh, we are still living in a divided world, world, but the frontiers are a bit different. They uh, switched from the vertical to the horizontal level, and we now have uh, frontiers and borders between south and north, or northwest. Um, and we all know that we are, that Serbia is the, so to, so, so to say, the northest non-EU country in, in Europe. All our neighbors from east, west, and north are members of EU. Romania, Hungary, and, and Croatia. We also have to know 
to remind ourselves that the first border, that the first wall, sorry, that the first wall that was built in Europe after the the la chute, ça se dit comment? Uh, divide. Uh, no, no, uh, la chute. Fall. Fall. Fall sorry, fall uh, of the Berlin Wall was this wire fence that Hungary uh, built on our northern frontier to, you know, like keep immigrants out of their country. So again, Serbia became a world in between. And from my perspective and perspective of Anja Susha, this is not a frustration, although it feels somehow. Uh, so we thought that this situation should be used in a creative and positive sense uh, for Bitev to become again one of the major meeting points between different cultures in a divided world. It's a bit problematic when we think that we are not don't living anymore in a, uh, in 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 the world based on ideologies. We always think that okay, this was communist world against against the capitalist world or against you know liberal democracy against totalitarian states etc cetera, etc cetera. but nowadays it's still very ideological because it's all it's all about money who is rich and who is not rich and uh, borka you are the only person in this room who is allowed to, to, to have a phone on, and I'm honest, this was not, this was not irony, not at all. Borka Pavicevic. Yeah, I will finish very, very soon. Um, could you imagine how long I could talk when I have voice? Uh, yeah, so it's again a, a division, it's again a question of cultural clashes, it's again the fact that we have a lot of refugees in Serbia, but we treat them very well. And that's something very, very positive that should be stressed uh, here. Yesterday evening, maybe some of you, some of you I know, were on our Lebanese production in National Theater. And we didn't want to make any fuss out of it. We don't, didn't want to publicize it because it wouldn't be nice. But it's good to know that we invited to this performance, which is which was an Arab language, an Arab language, uh, dealing with the war in uh, civil war that Milena mentioned in Lebanon. We invited refugees to come to the show to be part of the audience. There were some 20, 30 refugees with us. It was really very nice to see refugees coming with proper tickets and you know critics who had to wait with their cards and didn't have where to to sit. Uh, the house was really packed and full. And afterwards, as it was the farewell party for the International uh, Critics uh, Congress, uh, we have been celebrating all together critics, international critics, Yugoslav Serbian artists and refugees um, until, until early in the morning. That's why one of the reasons until two or three in the morning. That's one of the reasons why I cannot speak. Uh, so I think we will continue uh, from the, uh, for the next uh, editions of BTEF in the same way. We intend to keep this position of a world in between that could challenge both sides and that could be a place of dialogue. As I feel being among friends and colleagues, I hope there, is, there are no journalists between in, in, this, in this group. I could share already, because I have been already starting working on 2017 edition, simultaneously with all this work. Uh, we are interested in an Iranian performance dealing with female stories for uh, very touching female stories. We couldn't get this performance for this year. Then I'm very much interested in a Kurdish production from Turkey, which 
seems to be a big success. We will for sure have a Nigerian performance on the next edition of it. So we will keep in this cosmopolitan, in this cosmopolitan spirit, but it's not only about cosmopolitan spirit, it's about social dialogue in an unfortunately still, in a different way, divided world. Thank you very much. Thank you.